Atma course. Get smart. Get ahead. Now, what are employee benefits? When we talk about employee benefits, all benefits paid to the employee, including salary, allowances, overtime, house provided at subsidized rate or free of cost, motor vehicles provided, all these are part of employee benefits. But these are all accounted based on the normal accrual accounting concept. If you have received the services, if the company has received the services and not accounted, not paid the salary, that will be shown as liability. Most important part of this standard is the retirement benefits. Retirement benefits can be of two types. One is a defined contribution plan. The other is defined benefit plan. Under defined contribution plan, what the company has to contribute will be clearly known. For example, a company agrees to contribute 10% of the employee's salary to a pension fund. Therefore, what the company has to account is 10% of whatever is salary paid during a particular period. The other is the company agrees to pay say 15 days salary for every year of service. This is a defined benefit plan. The benefit of benefit what the employee is going to get is defined. How much the company has to contribute is not known because this will be based on the last drawn salary. This is where there is accounting issues. For first, let us look at the defined contribution plan. These are post-employment benefit plans under which an entity pays fixed contributions into a separate fund and will have no legal or constructive obligation to pay for their contributions. Constructive obligation, it's important to understand what do we mean by constructive obligation. Constructive obligation is an obligation created by the organization by its own activities. Legal obligation is something required under the law or under a contract. For this case where the whatever is agreed is contributed, there is no further liability for any legal or constructive obligation. If the fund does not hold sufficient assets to pay all employee benefits relating to the employee service in the current and prior periods, the company doesn't have to contribute for that. The fund will have to distribute based on whatever they have. Now the defined benefit plans is our post employee benefit plans other than a defined contribution plan. Here as I discussed earlier, as I mentioned earlier, the company say 15 days salary for every year of service or 20 days salary for every year of service, which is based on the last drawn salary. Now what do we mean by settlements? Settlements occurs when an entity enters into a transaction that eliminates all further legal or constructive obligations for part or all of the benefits provided under a defined benefit plan. Sometimes an organization may decide to uh, close down one of the divisions and sell this to another organization and along with the employees of the organization will be transferred to the new organization and therefore they agree on a settlement so much amount will be paid to the company which takes over the responsibility by transferring either the assets from the present fund or giving additional fund for so these are settlement asset ceiling test amounts recognized as a net pension asset in the statement of financial position must not be stated at more than their recoverable amount for consequently, IAS 19 requires any net pension asset to be measured at the lower of net reported asset, the present value of any refunds, reductions of future contributions available from the pension plan. The amount is charged immediately to other comprehensive income. Therefore, any amount exceeding the asset ceiling test will be charged to other comprehensive income. Atma course. Get smart, get ahead.